Let's now go to the National Youth Development Agency, who is hosting Deputy President Paul Mashatile, and he's delivering the keynote address there. Attached to long-term economic outcomes, such as employment, sustained growth, and skills development. Program Director, in the light of this, we are pleased to announce the following achievements, and we're hoping for more going forward regarding the N NYDA's grant program for 2022 and 2023 fiscal year. And the first one is that more than 2,000 youth or youth-owned enterprises have been funded. 34,000 youth and youth-owned enterprises are supported with non-financial and development interventions. More than 6,000 jobs created and sustained through supporting entrepreneurs and enterprises. In addition, the National Youth Development Agency and the University of Sao Paulo have organized an agricultural summer school that we believe will benefit a lot of young people. The tropical bio-based production system Summer School seeks to provide an overview of the technologies, economics, and environmental scenario of the Brazilian agriculture, forestry, and livestock farming through lectures and field trips. The University of Sao Paulo in Brazil hosts the school annually. The NYDA will provide funding for four young people to attend the summer school in Brazil. And upon their return, they will be expected to enrich uh, our country with the necessary skills that they would have gained in Brazil. So we wish to congratulate the four participants that will be traveling to Brazil at the end of July. Uh, I'm not sure if they are in in the house, but in Ms. Ntogo, Zohepim Caesar, uh, yes, Ntogo, and Togo is 29 year old. You may be sitting, Togo, I've seen you. <laughs> uh, and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, she's a PhD candidate in animal science. from the University of the Northwest. Uh, also, uh, welcome uh, Sifiso Sami Zondo. Uh, is welcome here, there. Uh, welcome. Uh, Sifiso is uh, 26 year old and uh, also a PhD candidate in agriculture. from the University of Mpumalanga. Mpumalanga. Northwest. Uh, third uh, is Ms. Mapula Lesailani. There's Mapula. 27-year-old. Yeah, it's really youth and I'm uh, Now, Mapula is, she is a cum laude in genetics graduate from the University of Stellenbosch. And she is currently working in Limpopo and Zanin. And, and lastly, Mr. Ramatolo Tlotleng, 33 years old and advanced diploma in animal sciences from the University of Tswane Technology. Uh, we wish you well as you travel and come back and enrich our country. Congratulations to all of you.
program director, we are indeed working towards economic transformation for young people. This is also evident through the 2020 Presidential Youth Employment Intervention. This intervention is aimed to realize rapid gains by linking more young people to new and existing opportunities and to create two million jobs for young people in the course of a decade. Among other things, the president, Presidential Youth Employment Intervention brings together a wide range of partners and breaks down silos between uh, government, departments, uh, but also amongst different levels of government. That's your national, provincial, local government, but also the private sector. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of partnership, it's important that as a country we continue to value partnership, particularly as we are a signatory to the African Continental Free Trade uh, Area Agreement. To us, this is a groundbreaking agreement which paves the way for young people in South Africa to engage in different markets on the African continent, but also provide opportunities for exposure and development of human capital. It is thus important to invest in the building of capacity and support young people to trade in the continent, but more so to provide accessible financial support. There needs to be diversified financial instruments that speak directly to the needs of young people, and we need to make a process to access them in a very less cumbersome way. Young people in rural areas should not be forgotten. Uh, we should not, they should not be excluded. And we know that young people in rural areas face uh, enormous challenges. They too should be supported and their talents and businesses or business acumen should be harnessed. Addressing the challenges of rural communities is a big step towards creating an equitable society. Um, in fact, recently I've been visiting a lot of provinces and I've, I've made sure that when my office arranges programs, we try and go to rural communities, uh, as the President has asked us to go and look at programs of government in these areas, but particularly where there are uh, challenges of, of service delivery. Uh, so we are trying a lot to bring uh, rural communities to the fore. Program Director, the Special Economic Activity Data, South Africa, reveals that economic activities vary across the region, with the largest cities lagging behind job creation compared to smaller towns since 2013-14 tax year. It is therefore upon us as this NYDA investment roundtable to explore more investment opportunities in rural and peri-urban areas in order to more equitably spread economic opportunity for young people. By promoting competition and attracting private capital, states will be able to develop transportation networks, bolster internet con connectivity, and serve the wave of digitization that is sweeping across the African continent. The implementation of the African free, continental free trade area must be supported by appropriate national policies and support programs. This can play a pivotal role in making trade opportunities accessible to young people both in rural and urban areas. This will help countries to reduce inequality gap. Youth entrepreneurs can capitalize on trade agreements and frontier technologies to tackle systemic social issues 
addressing societal needs and challenges globally, regardless of developmental, their developmental level. As young, people, as young people are generally among the earliest adopters of new technologies, they are poised to take advantage of innovations in this area to drive the impact of social entrepreneurship. Ladies and gentlemen, one other critical thing that we must also take into consideration is the mental health of young people. To have young people who are engaged in economic activity, we need to ensure that their mental health is top priority. And the National Youth Policy 2030 accordingly places a priority on the mental health of young people. This also means that we must invest in resources such as therapy and support groups, making mental health care more accessible to all, and breaking down the barriers that prevent people from seeking care. We must also accelerate the implementation of the NYP with regard to changing their lives and dealing with the hardships that youth experience due to unemployment or high levels of unemployment and economic hardships. Since the dawn of democracy, our government has embarked on reforms to drive transformation, inclusivity for young people, particularly through what was started as the National Youth Commission, established on 16 June 1996 by former President Nelson Mandela. This was followed by the establishment of Umsobo Fund in 2001 to create entrepreneurship and job creation opportunities in response to the high levels of unemployment and economic challenges that young people uh, are facing. The Umsobo Youth Fund was one of the largest investments the government made to address the country's youth unemployment challenges. Following the 2009 merge of this institution to become the National Youth Development Agency, the NYDA, it is your responsibility to ensure that both public and private sectors play a transformative role in bringing young people into the mainstream of the economy. To further strengthen service delivery, promote nation building, foster social cohesion, and assist the youth in acquiring occupational skills necessary to, uh, for sustainable livelihood opportunities. The government has also established what we call the National Youth Service Program, the largest service program of its kind in South Africa today. Program director, as we mark 20 years since the National Youth Service Program, uh, inception, we must reflect on how far we have come in our mission to instill a sense of national pride and pride in one's neighborhood, teach young people life skills, and encourage community service that is based on volunteer, voluntarism or volunteering. The significance that the National Youth Service plays in reversing the adverse effects of youth unemployment and apathy was demonstrated by its inclusion in the State of the Nation Address with a declaration that the revised or revitalized National Youth Service will create a further 36,000 opportunities through non-profit and community-based organizations. In 2022-23 financial year, the following were achieved or the following achievements were highlighted, amongst others, 12,000 young people who participated in the National Youth Service, expanded volunteer projects, more than 7,000 young people who participated in the Community Works Program, more than 46,000 young people who have secured paid service opportunities, and 34,000 young people who have completed service activities, 7,000 7, young people who transitioned out of the National Youth Service to other opportunities. This is just a few of the things that we 
have achieved, but we are obviously looking at doing more and more, and I'm hoping that uh, uh, out of this roundtable uh, discussions, uh, we will come out with more ideas that will help us advance. Program Director, as I conclude, uh, we have highlighted a number of different government programs where we want to partner with the private sector as well, but we want to see more young people participating and the youth driving economic growth and development in our country. Uh, now, many always say, well, government is very good at coming up with programs, uh, very good, but hey, when it comes to implementation, see a chiga chig. So I want to make a call to you as young people to come in that space of implementation. Uh, the policies are there, the programs are there. We, we have to do what I call the discipline of execution. Uh, we want to make sure young people must be impatient when things are not happening. Uh, so come in, drive uh, implementation so that we can see progress. Uh, because it's well and good to have conferences, to review policies, but we must, when we come to such gatherings, be able to say, Sese la manch. We were here, now we are here. There is progress. So that's what I want to see happening. Uh, more than ever before, uh, I want to see young people at the forefront of implementation. If we can accomplish this, if we can ensure that there's discipline of execution and faster uh, implementation, there's no way we can fail. Uh, in whatever we do, whatever our plans are, we will succeed to implement programs that will benefit young people, but we want to see young people at the forefront. Uh, you know, there is a slogan that the Youth League likes, Uzoetola uh, Ganja. You know that one. Uzoetola <laughs> Ganja. Yes. If you are sitting in a corner somewhere, there is no progress that will come to you. So we want you young people uh, at the forefront. And, you know, when I talk about the discipline of execution, uh, it's, it's really us being impatient when things are done in a slow pace. Uh, I always make an example, uh, you know, with Rwanda, and I think many people have heard me saying this. Uh, when I visited Rwanda at some point and I asked them, how long it takes for them to approve permits. At the time I was in Gauteng and the Premier of Gauteng, uh, David Makura, who became Premier after me, brought me back uh, to Gauteng to be his MEC for Human Settlement. And then he called me one day and said, in addition to what you're doing as MEC for Human Settlement, I want you to cut red tape in government. Now, the Premier didn't give me terms of reference, no resources, so I had to figure out what does this man want me to do. Uh, so I started bringing a team around and we started doing work. And during one of my travels, I went to Rwanda because I'm looking at what other countries are doing. And I was very, uh, you know, impressed when in Rwanda, they told me that uh, when somebody applies for a business license, uh, the turnaround is quite faster. So I wanted to know how long it takes them. Uh, can you guess how long it takes to get a reply from the government 
Uh, not that we've received your letter. And the reply that says, yes, you've got this permit or not. Six hours. Not, not six days, six hours. Um, so when you talk about the speed of execution and getting things done, it's real, it can be done. It's, it's, it's not magic. It just need that discipline. Uh, not these people when they get documents in their offices, they look at the documents and, oh, I'm still going to lunch for two hours. Uh, no, that no, don't care. Uh, we have seen that in some government departments. Where somebody will look at you and like, oh, sorry, we, we're going to lunch. We're closing. Uh, uh, come back next week. Uh, no, we need the discipline to get things done. It is done in other countries. Uh, and, and we can learn more from what uh, other countries are doing. But program director, let me thank you uh, to have the opportunity to, to join you this morning. Uh, uh, Karabo, my sister, thank you very much. We wish you well. Uh, young people are the future. Uh, you see, we are getting old. Uh, I was once a, a youth myself, but you can see the gray hair is coming. So we are looking upon you to lead the way uh, as young people. Please lead the way. We will support you. Uh, you know, you want to raise half a billion. Uh, there's no way we are going to abandon young people. Uh, you know, I'm going to talk to Minister Kodongwani and we, we will throw in so that you can succeed. Uh, I don't want a situation where you say we have so uh, many good programs as young people, but our government never supported us. Uh, that will be something of the past. Uh, that's why today the programs of young people are in the presidency. I'm sure you are aware of that. In the presidency, because we want to ensure that the presidency as the center is right at the top of supporting young people and women in this country. Uh, I would have liked to uh, hear you, SG, with your statistics and maybe hear the other inputs, but unfortunately I'm not able to stay long because the president had to leave for France uh, for other agent matters. So yesterday there are some things that he's asked me to take care of whilst he's away. <laughs> 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 I remember the, the government can be on autopilot <laughs> so somebody must must take care so <laughs> so I have to go and and take care of those things I can't tell you what they are because you know the government are top secret <laughs> thank you very much